we are recording now. Thank you for joining me for Oakland Creates uh, um, Exhibitor Spotlight. Today, we have Maxi Rodriguez. I'm just going to ask you to quickly give me your pronouns and then uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and um, how you um, started in art with your inspiration for doing zines and comics and art. Hi, so uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I apologize in advance. I stink with words, especially when it comes to talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess basically what I do is uh, chubby plus size art. Um, I used to call it chubby girl art, um, but I want it to be more, uh, what, what's the term? I want it to be more open to everybody, not okay. just you know women. Um, so I mostly just create plus size art, um, comics. And what basically got me into what I do now um, is the fact that um, I'm a big fan of comics. Like I grew up with um, Wonder Woman, Batman, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, all the, the comic strips, the basics. Right. Um, <clears throat> but there was no plus size representation. Or at least there wasn't the correct Positive. plus size right. representation. It was just pure negative. And one good example is Big Bertha from Marvel Comics, where um, she's this really big plus size woman. But... Um, her superpower is she vomits, she throws oh, up, no. and she loses, and she's skinny. She's a supermodel. And I'm just like... Are you serious? Huh? I am dead serious. I've never seen that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I don't think she's that popular anymore because of the whole controversy of, like, vomiting and stuff. And I'm just like, what? The <laughs> what? That's amazingly horrible. It is. Oh, it's horrifying. I was just so ticked off when i saw her the first time i'm like no this mm -mm, no can't be I real can't... i am noping out of this <laughs> <laughs> so i just started you know what if i do comics about plus size you know about plus size girls first um and then they turn into comics about my life cool. and i'm just like how did we end up in that part where i don't even know how to talk about myself <laughs> And then it just evolved. And then I went to grad school, got nice. my MFA in comics. And then from there, I've been doing it since. I was going to ask you what, I know you were one of the um, readers for San Francisco Zine Fest with Alex Combs. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about your association with Oakland and CCA. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, um, well, I live here in Southern California. I live in a small town in Norwalk. Um, and I actually went to CCA, okay. in, but the San Francisco campus, I, I didn't go to the Oakland campus okay. because my program, which was the MFA in comics was based in San Francisco. And I think I only went to Oakland once and that was to go hang out at a bar with Brina, Lawrence, nice. Alex, and a few of my classmates. And I think that was the first and only time I ever went to Oakland. I'm like, nice. I got to do this again. And then COVID happens and I'm like, damn it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you at Oakland Creates. I really, your art resonates with me. Um, I'm a big girl too, but I just like your point of view and just the playful way you draw, but then also talk about, you know, really serious issues uh, in terms of acceptance, but also in terms of just loving yourself and being okay with who you are and, you know, that kind of FU world uh, thing. I love that, you know. So I, yeah. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to, to ha have you table and talk a little bit more about your stuff. So then I have another question too related to art. So um, were you inspired? Do you typically take real life? I know you do some real life things that in your relationship and you talk about your relationship to... Um, body size and ableism but are is there an, another particular inspiration for you did an incident happen or did someone um in your life really inspire you or, or do you draw what do you really draw from in terms of 
uh, like your subject matter, not necessarily just the imagery, but are these real life instances or do you sometimes make up situations? I know a lot of my persons are strictly nonfiction. They're stuff that really happens to me. Like a lot of the racist crap that's been spouted to me is stuff that people have actually said to me. So do you draw from real life stuff or is some of it made up or how does that work? <laughs> oh no, mm, it's all 100% real. Oh wow! Every cool. everything you see in my comics, it's happened to me. Even the super hardcore intimate stuff, wow. it's happened to me. Um, and originally, I wasn't trying to go in that direction because I didn't think my life was interesting enough to talk mm. about. So I tried to keep it fictionalized. Um, I did try to pull in a few things here and there for my life to make it interesting. Um, but then I remember a friend of mine, this was, I think, uh, two years before I started grad school, um, a friend of mine, she was telling me, you know, your comics are reaching as far as Delaware, right? And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I have a friend from Delaware. Um, and he has a girlfriend who's also plus size. And he was telling me how he's reading these comics about a chubby bunny and how, you know, her boyfriend and stuff and how she's happy with herself. And when I told him, oh, I'm friends with her. And he's like, wait, <laughs> you're friends with the chubby bunny artist? And I'm nice. like, excuse me? <laughs> and then from there, I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to get more yeah, personal going. with my comics. Oh, wow. And then okay. I... And at the time, the name of the comic book or the comic strip was called Chronicles of a Chubby Girl. But because I was known as the Chubby Bunny artist, I'm like, okay, let's switch the name. Sure enough, the name got switched. It got more popular. When I went to grad school, I picked out a different thesis to do because I didn't want to do Chubby Bunny, even though she got me into grad school. But um, my mentor was at the time Justin Hall. Um, I, I know you're familiar with him, right? Definitely. Love Justin. He had been trying to convince me to switch to Chubby Bunny, but I was too scared. And then we switched off mentors in the spring and I got Ed Luce. And he asked Lu Ed to, co to convince me to switch theses. <laughs> sure enough, I did. But I told him I'm scared. And he's like, why? Because I don't think my life's interesting enough to be a comic book. And he's like, your life's plenty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Don't worry sure. about it. It, it ha it'll happen when it happens and it'll be awesome. Just, just do it. I'm like, okay. Nice. And here I am. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad he convinced you. I really love the work that you do. It's important work too. Um, so I have a couple just silly fun questions. I asked the previous person and they didn't think it were, they were, they were that easy, but I thought they were pretty easy. So if you could only eat three foods three different foods for the rest of your life what would those three foods be mm. <laughs> first one is peanut butter nice because i love peanut butter second one is carrots ah well, okay I, I love carrots um third one i want to say between either chili cheese fries or Ooh. my mother-in-law's potato salad Ah oh, wow, that sounds amazing. Both of those are good <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah, but the net, the previous person picked all like uh, soft foods as well. So I was just thinking, oh man, this is gonna be a shitatorium. <laughs> I have to have some bread in there for myself, some type of <laughs> solid food. <laughs> <laughs> So the next question. So if you're stranded on a deserted island, what three people would you want there with you? Again, you only get three options, and that seemed to be difficult too. So I want to get your take on that one. They can be mm. dead, alive, famous, or not famous. Just whoever, three people that you think you can handle for the rest of your days on a deserted island. Uh, let me see. Um want to see my boyfriend but I need him to finish medical school first so <laughs> <laughs> if there's wi-fi on the island then maybe I'll, I'll drag him with me <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um 
Second person? Rats. I want to say, um, um, my, uh, uh, crap. <laughs> it's kind of hard right now. Um, there's a lot of people. <laughs> my best friend, Myra. Nice. Because I know I'm going to go insane. And um, she's a, a, she studied psychology and she's currently in grad school for occupational therapy. I think it's occupational therapy. Cool. I'll probably drag cool. her with me just so like I don't go insane. Somebody to talk to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my third, hmm. Would it count if I say maybe one of my dogs? Sure, I was going to suggest that, but I didn't want to lead you in that direction. <laughs> but of course, yeah. Uh, probably one of my dogs nice because i'll be lonely and i need one of them to cuddle with there you go <laughs> sweet thank you so much for joining me and um <laughs> putting up with my questions the good and the bad um i really appreciate you doing this can you want to shout out your instagram if you have a twitter all your social media sure um so instagram i go under casudo productions which is the user name i have here somewhere yep right there yes. <laughs> um that's all yeah that's pretty much my instagram i also have a ko-fi page um where uh you can donate because you know that one yeah i'd love to artists visit. artists need money for food and that's where i also opened up my brand new shop because cool. i'm trying to steer away from etsy at, for the time being um i also have a twitter which is Chubby Bunny Art, only because Kasuda Productions was taken. Oh, wow. So your coffee, your Ko-Fi is the same? Yeah, and I also have a website, too, where everyone can just take a look at, because um, I know right now we're we're having, you know, COVID and all the shenanigans. I posted right. up all my current books up for free. Oh, cool. So if Thank anyone you. wants to, anyone wants to read them because they're bored, you can totally read all my comic books, um, starting from Chubby Bunny Volume 1 up to Plus Size Girl Magic Volume 2, but just a heads up, parents, Plus Size Girl Magic is not suited for kids. I am not going to be held responsible if your kids see um, adult stuff. So it's there's like, literally maybe a warning on the comic. On the comic. Okay, cool. I was going to say, so it's 13 and above. Uh, otherwise, parental oh, no. guidance needed, right? It, it's 18 and above, actually. 18? Wow. Okay, let me go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my uh, website is kasudoproductions.com. Um, thank you. If you go on my Instagram, there are links to all my stuff well, perfect. in my bio. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you so much. <laughs>